be pleased to remember in your prayers the family of Margaret Edmonds who went to be with the Lord this week. And the service will be this Thursday at Jacksonville Memory Gardens at 11 a.m. And the family will be receiving friends beginning at 10 a.m. this Thursday. I know they'd appreciate your prayer support. Decoding James, part 11. Our scripture today is James chapter 2, verses 21 through 26. Wasn't Abraham our father justified by works in offering Isaac, his son, on the altar. You see that faith was active together with his works, and by works, faith was made complete. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is justified by works, and not by faith alone. In the same way, wasn't Rahab the prostitute also justified by works in receiving the messengers and sending them out by a different route? For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. A few weeks ago, in our last study of James, we talked about three kinds of faith. I would ask you to tell me what those are, but you would crush me when you can't remember any of them. We'll talk about them in just a moment. But what kind of faith really saves a person? Are good works required to be saved? How can I know that my faith is real? And James helps us to answer these questions by explaining three kinds of faith. Only one of these three is true saving faith. The three kinds of faith. Number one, deceased faith. Number two, deceived faith. And number three, daring faith faith deceased faith verse 17 in the same way faith if it does not have works is dead in other words is deceased by itself faith without works is deceased faith James calls it dead faith we can know our faith is dead when we try to substitute words for works. We can know our faith is dead when we try to substitute what we say with what we actually do. See, we can know the right words to pray in public. We can know the right words to say to appear to be religious. And we can think that words are the same as works, but they are not. And then James gives us an example of deceased faith, an example of dead faith in verse 15. If a brother or sister is without clothes and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, stay warm and be well fed, but you don't give them what the body needs, what? Good is it? See, if we have deceased faith, if we have dead faith, we'll see the need, we'll say some religious words, but do nothing to help. Deceased faith, dead faith, is only a bunch of talk. Deceased faith, dead faith, doesn't. True faith, real faith, does we have deceased faith we have deceived faith the deceiver the liar is our enemy Jesus calls him the devil deceived faith comes from the enemy the devil deceived faith is only intellectual faith 
In other words, deceived faith is only in our head and never makes it to our heart. It's been said that some people will miss heaven by 18 inches. 18 inches is the distance between our head and our heart. Remember, whenever there is truth, there will always be a counterfeit. Whenever there is truth, there will always be a counterfeit. Deceived faith is counterfeit faith. And the master counterfeiter is the enemy. Most people are shocked to learn that even the demons can have faith. Verse 19. You believe that God is one? Good. Even the demons believe that. In other words, even the demons have faith. And they shudder. Some people think that they are way too religious to believe in this devil stuff. But Jesus believed. He believed there's a devil and there are demons. John 8, 44, Jesus said, You are of your father, the devil. And your will is to do your father's desires. You see, demons show us that it's possible to believe. It's possible to have faith in the wrong thing and be deceived the the demons believe with their head and not with their heart they only have intellectual faith and then to try to make it seem to be real they throw in some emotion verse 19 even the demons believe and they shudder some people make the mistake of trying to found their faith on their emotions If they can feel it, then it must be real. And if they cannot feel it, then it must not be real. And that is not true. Our emotions, our feelings can deceive us. Our faith is only as good as what our faith is in. So in what do you believe? In whom do you believe? Religious people, church people, make the mistake of putting their faith in their faith. Do not put your faith in the preacher. Do not put your faith in the church. Only put your faith in Jesus Christ. There is one faith that saves. And it is not deceased faith. It is not deceived faith. Saving faith is daring faith. Daring faith has the courage to believe in the saving power of Jesus Christ. Daring faith is real faith. Daring faith results in real life change. Deceased faith, dead faith, has no works. Deceived faith is only in our head and in our emotions. Daring faith always leads to positive action because we are changed From the inside out. And only a changed heart can bring a changed life. We like to say it like this. Leading real life change through Jesus from the inside out. Faith is confidence in what we hope for. And assurance about what we do not see. Faith assures us. That what we hope for is real, even when we cannot 
see it. Daring faith. True faith in Jesus Christ is what identifies us as a Christian. But it doesn't stop there. Daring faith. Real faith. True faith. Saving faith. Always leads us to obedience. Obedience to God is a matter of our will. Obedience to God is a matter of our heart. Obedience to God is a matter of our everyday life. Daring faith, real faith, true faith, saving faith always leads us to obey God. And obedience will always lead us to do good works. Works are a person's actions or deeds. Work is what we do for some kind of reward. We work at our job expecting to be paid for the work we do. And it's also true of our volunteer work. It has its own set of rewards. Appreciation from others. A feeling of goodwill. In the context of the Bible, works is the good stuff we do. Especially the acts of charity, the blessings to other people. And the debate continues to this day. Do we become a Christian by faith alone? Or do we become a Christian by the good stuff we do? Which one is right? What is the biblical relationship between faith and works? The big theological word for this is justification. See, it's through justification that we can be justified. To justify is to declare someone as righteous. Justification is an act of God. In other words, only God can justify. When we repent of our sin... And we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ for our forgiveness. We are seen in God's eyes as being made righteous. In other words, we are justified by God. A good way to help us remember what it means to be justified. Just as if I'd never sinned. Just as if I'd never sinned. That's the way God sees us when our sin is under the blood of Christ. James tells us that we are justified by works. James 2.24, you see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. But the Apostle Paul tells us we're justified by faith. Romans 3, 28. For we conclude that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. So, is it works or is it faith? Which one is it? Now we have to be careful here. To make sure we keep the scripture in context. It's a dangerous thing to take the scripture out of context. People have taken one verse in scripture and built a whole denomination on that one verse. That's where our cults come from. That's where false religions come from. And so we have to be careful to keep the scripture in its context. James 2.24 is a summary of the book of James. So it must be understood in the rest of the teaching in James. 
Romans 3.28 is a summary of the book of Romans. And so it must be understood in the rest of the teaching in Romans. Works are required for our justification. In other words, works are required for us to become a Christian. Now, do not miss this next part. The works that are required are not ours. The works that are required for our justification, the works that are required for us to become a Christian are not our works, but the works of Jesus Christ. The works that Jesus finished on the cross. Our works, the good stuff we do, cannot and will not earn or keep our justification. We are saved by grace. Grace cannot be earned. God's only requirement for our justification is faith in Jesus Christ. So, is it works or is it faith? Which is it? James and Paul are defending the same gospel, but from different viewpoints. They are both defending the one true gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul is standing up against the false teaching the false teaching that says we can earn our justification through the good stuff we do. James is standing up against the false teaching that says following Jesus is easy. That all you have to do is to be religious. Neither of these are true. So Paul or James, faith, or works, which one is right? They both are. That's why today we must continue the fight against false teaching in our churches. Some church people today believe that they can earn their way to God. We must stand against that false teaching. Some church people today believe that since we're saved by grace through faith, our works and our obedience to God do not matter. We must stand up against that false teaching in the church. In our scripture today, God uses two extremely different people to illustrate the truth about faith and works. Abraham was the godly father of the Jewish nation. It was said that Abraham was a friend of God. On the other hand, Rahab was an ungodly Gentile sinner. She worked as a prostitute. She was an enemy of God. So how could God use these two opposites to help us see the truth about faith and works? They both surrendered their wills to God by faith. They both were changed from the inside out. Verse 21. Wasn't Abraham our father justified by works in offering Isaac his son on the altar? You see that faith was active together with his works. And by works, faith was made complete. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God. 
And it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. In this incredible story, we see how the faith of Abraham completely changed his life. His faith in God was so strong. He chose to obey God, even if it meant the death of his son. That's what real faith does. It brings us to obedience to God. Real faith brings real life change from the inside out. Verse 25. In the same way, wasn't Rahab the prostitute also justified by works in receiving the messengers and sending them out by a different route? For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. Rahab heard the truth of God and she responded in faith and her faith changed her life. Her faith activated her good works and her good works brought glory to God. So this is our bottom line today. Grace through faith saves. And the evidence of that faith is works. If someone claims to have faith but does not have good works, then real faith does not exist. There is no conflict between real faith and works. Both faith and works are important parts of the Christian life. Faith is the cause of salvation. Works is the evidence. God bless. Thank you.
songs of freedom. 